Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship at East Livingston Baptist Church. A very special day today with our baptismal service. We're glad you're here. We're glad to welcome you. Let's begin with our opening hymn. I stand in the amazed in the presence of Jesus, the Nazarene. We'll sing about our Lord today as we begin our service. You'll find that on page 547. Let's stand and join. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come into your house this morning, we have joy in our heart for the love that you have shown to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. We gather here this morning with open hearts, open ears, open eyes. We're looking for that word from you this morning as we gather together, and we thank you, God, that you speak to us in that still, small voice. So be with us in all that we do, especially as we go to the waters of baptism this morning. We ask now that you hear us as we join our voices in praying the prayer Jesus taught us when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take a moment now to greet one another.
Sometimes I think What will people say of me When I'm only just a memory When I'm home where my soul belongs Was I loved But no one else would show up Was I Jesus to the least of us Was my worship more than just a song Everybody, let's go ahead and uh, start to find your way back home. We're glad to welcome all of you, of course, to our service this morning. And uh, with the baptismal service, which is later uh, in the service, we have some uh, family members and friends, so we're, we're thrilled to welcome everyone to the service this morning. Go ahead and uh, register your uh, presence with us with those uh, booklets that are on the pew there along the center aisle. Pass that to your neighbor, we appreciate that. So uh, welcome to the service. It's uh, a blessed morning, the sun is shining. And uh, before I get into uh, activities, and ministries. So how, how are you doing with your brackets out there? <laughs> oh my goodness. I did not see that UMBC game, but I think I heard the shouts from where, you know. Is there a bracket in the country still left? I don't know. The, maybe the president of that university, you know, down in Baltimore. Something else. The Buckeyes gave it a go against Gonzaga last night. But they came out in the short end of the stick. But that's all right. You know what we say in sports. Maybe next year. You know. <laughs> but I've already uh, congratulated Ursuline. Ursuline, you, are you listening? Yeah, there you go. Um, at her high school, the Pickerington Central High School, uh, the girls basketball team won the state championship. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, we congratulate uh, Ursh for some of her friends who, yeah, that's, that's a big deal. That's, anyway, there's a lot going on, March Madness and um, all these things, but today is a very special day. We get to focus on uh, our ministry here and end the service with our baptism. So we're just thrilled uh, that you're here. Um, activities going on. The youth started their money raising project last week. Uh, they're going to continue that. Uh, many of you have already been uh, generously supporting the youth. Thank you. Uh, they will have their items, uh, Christian items for you in the fellowship hall so that you can look those over after the baptism this morning. So uh, all of that goes to help support the youth uh, youth group, so they'll be there today. And as we said, the way we uh, do our uh, baptismal service at East Livingston Baptist Church is it is the end of our service. 
Matter of fact, it's not even in this space. We go down the hall to the fellowship hall. So well, we'll look forward to that this afternoon after our service. But um, let me uh, get you up to speed next uh, week. Uh, next Sunday morning is Palm Sunday morning, so we begin the Holy Week services. And, and uh, let me just run through those. Palm Sunday next uh, week. And then the following Thursday, that's the 29th. That's our Maundy Thursday. And we have the meal in the upper room service. Um, Easter Sunday will begin. That's two weeks from today with our uh, annual sunrise service in the fellowship hall at 8 o'clock. Everyone's invited. When we finish that service, we have a breakfast. There is a clipboard circulating again today. It, we started it last week because the breakfast is um, kind of a covered dish. You bring some food to share and uh, we fill up the table and then we have a wonderful time of fellowship. And so uh, sign up if you haven't had a chance to, to be with us next on Easter morning in two weeks. Bring some food. Uh, it's a great way to start the Easter morning here at the church. Then on Easter morning, our service in here in the sanctuary at 11, the youth will be doing a drama to begin the service, um, the resurrection at the empty tomb. And um, the uh, sanctuary will be filled with Easter lilies. And in your bulletins this morning is the, the order form. And uh, <clears throat> each year we ask you to donate a lily or two. You make them in honor of someone. You make them in memory of someone. And then we have them in the sanctuary. The sanctuary smells wonderful of the, the scent of the lilies. Then when the Easter service ends, then you take those plants with you. So uh, sign up this morning to order one of those. Put those, that information. Um, I don't see Peg or Joanne here this morning. So, uh, but Janet, there's Janet, smiling at me. So if you want to turn those in today, turn them in to Janet. Uh, Peg is down in South Carolina this morning with her daughter Judy. But uh, she'll be here next Sunday and you can, you can also give it to her. But... Um, that's how we get our Easter lilies. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of that this morning as we go through. Uh, it says, join us and invite a friend. I always, I always tell people, um, people that are in your neighborhood or people you work with or people you go to school with, uh, they may not have a place to go to church on Easter morning. And people are very open to going to church on a, a, a wonderful day like that. So uh, just look around you and see if the Lord might nudge your heart to invite someone. You know, it'd be great to have, you know, all of our seats filled on Easter morning. And uh, so that's two weeks from today. Next week we, we begin it with Palm Sunday, and that's always a great day as well. All right, well, these are activities coming up, and uh, you can look in your bulletin. There's a little blurb in there about Vacation Bible School. We're recruiting teachers and helpers. If you'd like to help with that this year, look in your bulletin and volunteer. And uh, there's always something to do for the Lord here in our ministry at East Livingston. Well, let's go ahead and sing our praise song this morning. And we're gonna sing two songs this morning. Both of them are familiar. And <clears throat> The first one talks about how God helps us because he is our hope and our deliverer and he is everlasting. And then we go into the other chorus that really, uh, I think, for me, captures the Lenten spirit. And that is, open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. So these will uh, be the songs we'll use this morning uh, as we praise the Lord together.
especially during the Lenten season, that is our prayer. Open our eyes and our heart so that we might hear you, Lord, as you speak to us this day. Beautiful job. Well, our ushers are ready, so let me go ahead and invite them to come forward as they receive our morning tithes and offerings today. We're aware of God's blessings, and now we bring to him our tithes and offerings. Let us pray. Oh God, you are so good to us, and we feel your spirit in this place as we come together this morning. We come now, Lord, to bring our offerings to you as good stewards, as those who have been touched by your grace. We respond in obedience and with joy in our heart. So I pray, God, you will use these gifts to continue to spread the message of forgiveness and salvation through your son, Jesus. We pray your blessing on each gift and each one who gives this day. And as we do so, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Boys and girls, we're going to ask you to wait just a little bit. That's it. This is normally when you go, but you're going to wait. And you're going to be glad that you waited because we have um, a special treat for us this morning. Since it's the baptism day for both Michael and for Christopher, um, Emma has agreed to share a, a gift of uh, music ministry with us so boys and girls enjoy this music and when we're when we're finished with the music then it will be time so you just have a seat and listen to the music and thank you Emma thank you thank you for sharing with us this morning I'm nervous but <laughs> I'm so grateful today because 15 years ago when CJ was born the doctors thought he wasn't gonna make it when, it, when he got out, he wasn't crying, and they said, I don't think he's going to make it. And the room was filled with doctors. As a mother, if you had a baby, you know how that feel. All was in my mind, I'm going to go home with my baby. And uh, I laid my head down, disappointed, and I said, God, if you bring my baby through, I'm going to praise you. And I'm going to make sure that he knows you. Yes. And he did that for me. 
And I, when you promise God, you have to fulfill. Because if you don't fulfill, you don't want to know what he's going to do. So since then, I've made Jesus the center of my life. Amen. So I'm going to do for you, Jesus, you are the center of my life. Amen. <sighs> Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that is good and perfect comes from you. You're the hope of my contentment, hope. For what I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass of my way. You're the fire and light. That all the call and call in sadness, you are my laughter that shadow all my fears when I'm all alone. Your hands are there to hold. of my joy all that's good and perfect comes from you you're the heart of my contentment hope for all In the meadows and the streams, the verses of the children, my family and my home, you're the source and finish of all my highest Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for what I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Thank you, Emma. So see, boys and girls, why I wanted you to wait? Wasn't that great? 
All right, junior church is about ready to begin. So boys and girls, you may go ahead and be excused. And we thank Ms. Karen for being our leader this morning. <laughs> so thank you again, Emma. That song just really kind of captures why we're here this morning with Jesus as the center of our joy. That's beautiful. Well, before we go to uh, read our scripture this morning, we want to have a moment of prayer. We uh, put prayer requests in our bulletin for you each week. Um, I also have another prayer request. Um, this one comes from uh, Sue Hecathorn. Um, her son Ernie's uh, father-in-law, Bob Ventresca, is going to have some very important uh, serious surgery tomorrow morning. He's going to have a heart cath, and when they get the result of the cath, they may go ahead and do heart surgery. So uh, Ernie's uh, wife's family is all very concerned, so they're asking for prayer. So uh, Sue, let them know we'll be praying for Bob tomorrow morning. And, uh, and we'll lift them up in prayer as he goes to surgery. But it's fitting for us to take just a moment to calm our hearts, to turn uh, our attention to the Lord in our prayer this morning. So won't you join me? Let us pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we come to you in our prayer this morning, grateful for your presence here in our midst this day. Our testimony has just been lifted to you. You are the center of our joy. We thank you for being with us this morning and we praise your name. We worship you. We give you all glory, all laud, all honor this day. For you alone are worthy to receive our praises and our worship this morning. And we worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for forgiving us of our sins, O oh God, for as we gather before you, we're mindful that all come short of the glory of God. Which is why we call the news good news. The good news of your grace and your forgiveness. And so we, we thank you this morning, God, for your mercy towards us. We ask, Lord, that you be with those who have special needs in their own life this morning. We, we pray for those who are in hospitals today. We pray for those who are going into the hospital tomorrow, some awaiting tests, perhaps surgery. We pray for those who are on medications and working with doctors for their physical health. We pray for those in nursing homes this day or other care facilities, that you would watch over them and be their constant companion. We pray for those who can't be with us. They must stay home for reasons of health. We know, Lord, that you are with them wherever they might be. We pray for loved ones near and far, for, Lord, there are none that are far from you. Even though some might be far from us where we're not able to go and see them, we know, Lord, that you are with them and we pray for them this morning. We pray for those who are carrying the, the heaviness in their heart and the loss of a loved one. We know, God, that you are the one that gives to us the comfort that we need when we uh, lose a loved one. And I pray for that comfort through your spirit this morning for any who are here. Lord, we pray for all who have a burden on their shoulder, all who are losing sleep, all who are facing a stress in their life, in their family, in their job, in their school. Lord, as we find ourselves weighted down by the pressures of this life, we know that we are not alone and that we can always turn to you. And we do that this morning, God. You've told us to pray without ceasing, to pray about anything, to pray about everything. So we do so this morning in our prayer. We turn to you 
with thanksgiving and with expectation and in faith. We ask that you help us, that you meet us at the point of our need this morning and that you empower us to do your will in our lives and in this world. We pray for those who have decisions that they have to make in their lives. We pray, God, that you will always be the one to guide us with your wisdom, that we might choose wisely and we might choose your will over this world. We're grateful today, Father, for we come together to celebrate the baptism of two young men. And not only do we ask your blessing upon uh, these young men as they stand up in faith this day, but we pray that it might be an inspiration to all of us, that we might renew our own baptism, that we might grow stronger in our own faith, that we might step closer to you this day, that we might be your disciples in our world, that we might be your hands and feet and voice in our world today. So, Lord, we are just so, such grateful people because we feel blessed as we gather this morning. We've come from near and we've come from far to be here in this place this morning to meet with you so, Lord, hear the prayers that we lift to you, for we do some with, with speaking and some with, with writing, but we also carry requests and prayers in our hearts this morning, in the quietness of our own heart. And I pray, Lord, you will hear each of these unspoken prayers as we come before you with joy and with faith and with the love that you have put in our heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the first chapter of the book of Matthew. You're welcome to read along in your Bible as... As I uh, read our text this morning, Matthew chapter 1, the reading starts at verse 18 and goes down through verse 25. So uh, the reading from the Word of God, Matthew 20, or Matthew chapter 1, beginning at verse 18 through 25. We hear the word of the Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Jesus. May God bless to our heart the reading of this portion of Holy Scripture this morning. So, back in the day, there was this TV show on TV. It's still on uh, syndication and, and some of the channels you can see it. But it's a show called The Jeffersons. 
Oh, some of you have heard of it. Yes. Isabel Sanford played Louise Jefferson. Sherman Hemsley played George Jefferson. They had a son, Lionel. They had a maid named Florence. She had a mouth on her, I tell you. Their neighbors were Helen and Tom Wills. George didn't like them very much. <laughs> Louise and George Jefferson, an African-American family who, in the plot of this show, lived in a, uh, what was kind of seen as a kind of a run-down area in Queens, New York. And they always dreamed of becoming wealthy enough to move over into Manhattan. And in the, the plot of the show, by 1975, when that show opened on TV, George's dry cleaning business, which had started out very small, had successfully grown into a small chain now of stores. Now he owned a whole chain of dry cleaning stores. And it produced enough income that they could move into the city, you know? So that was the, the, the backdrop for the show, as you remember, if you saw it. And then there's that theme song. I'm sort of sorry to do this to you because it's one of those songs that stays in your head a while. You might be telling, oh, Pastor, why did you do that? But it was a song called Moving On Up. And it went like this. Well, we're moving on up to the east side to a deluxe apartment in the sky. We're moving on up to the east side. We finally get a piece of the pie. <laughs> you guys are too much, I tell you. A uh, little trivia for you. Did you know, this is if you're on Jeopardy or something, did you know that what show Jefferson was a spinoff from? It was a spinoff show. Yeah. All in the Family with Archie and Edith Bunker. The Jefferson were Archie and Edith's neighbors. That was until they moved on up into their own show. Well, the Jeffersons, they finally got their piece of the pie. They moved on up. And have you ever noticed, I'm sure you have, when we speak of making it big, you know, of an advancement, of a promotion, we tend to think of it as an upward motion. We're climbing the ladder of success, right? We're breaking the glass ceiling. We're uh, getting on top of the heap. We're... Uh, working on our computer and it gets a certain kind of a grade. It gets an upgrade. You know. We speak of elevating to fortune, honor, and glory. And when we speak of it like George and Louise, we are moving on up. Okay, so we got that. So let me ask you this. What do we do when Jesus says to us in Matthew 20, 16, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first, right? In other words, Jesus comes to us, and he tells us as Christian believers, there are times when moving on up means moving down. When our obedience to God leads us in the opposite direction of the way of this world. Sometimes the world says, hate. We say, love. Sometimes the world says, go. But we say, stay. Sometimes the world says, take. But we say, give. Sometimes to move up in our spiritual life, we must humble ourselves. We must move down instead. Now, in case you were wondering, this is why we read a text today from Matthew chapter 1. You're right. It is a passage about the birth of Jesus, about Christmas. Even though today is the Sunday before Palm Sunday. But in Matthew chapter 1, 
we see clearly Jesus was already up when he was born. He didn't have to move on up. He was already up. Over in the first chapter of the book of John, the prologue to the book of John, Jesus is described this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not overcome it. The Bible makes it clear. Jesus is God. And therefore has no beginning or end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. So the angels speak to both Joseph and to Mary. To explain that the birth of Jesus is Anything but ordinary. Jesus is to be Emmanuel, which literally means God with us. And that not only fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah 7.14 that said the one who would be born would be Emmanuel. But it also points to another of the things on that list that Jesus was willing to sacrifice in order to provide us with our salvation. We've been looking at the sacrifices Jesus made, the Lenten sacrifices. Today we see Jesus was willing to sacrifice his divine position and divine privilege. His position in the heavenly realm with his father where he had been since the beginning of time. Jesus was willing to sacrifice all of that out of his love for you and for me. Instead of moving on up, Jesus was willing to sacrifice that divine position that he held. He was willing to come down to us, to be born in Bethlehem and live among us to save his people from their sins, as the angel said. Now, you know what our response is to what Jesus has done for us. Thank you, Jesus. We thank him for that sacrifice of being willing to be Emmanuel, to come and live among us. Now, this past January, we looked together at a passage in Philippians. I want to quote it again. It describes what Jesus did for us, how he sacrificed for us. It's at the beginning of Philippians chapter 2. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as our Lord Christ Jesus. For Jesus, being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even the death on a cross. From where Jesus was, he was willing to come and be among us humbling himself even to death on a cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank our Lord for all the sacrifices that he was willing to make on our behalf. As Jesus sat with his disciples in the upper room on that night we now call Maundy Thursday, he explained how you and I, the followers of Jesus, can respond to the sacrifices that he's made on our behalf. As they were celebrating that Passover, Jesus looked at them and he said, A new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. He said, 
love each other as I have loved you. He knew that the next day he was going to the cross. This love that Jesus speaks about in the original text is the agape love, the sacrificial love of God. During the Lenten season, we're reminded that the sacrifice Jesus made for us are both the way of our salvation and the example for all of us to follow in our own daily walk of faith with the Lord. The way of salvation through his body and blood and an example for us to follow. Love one another, he said, as I have loved you. So we're going to get ready to baptize Michael and Christopher today. In their baptism, they are saying, thank you, Jesus, for all he has done to forgive their sins and to give them the gift of salvation and the gift of eternal life. And as we all then are witnesses to their baptism, may we all be reminded of how Jesus calls us to love as he loves. To be willing to sacrifice as he was willing to sacrifice. That others will know that we are his disciples. Now and forevermore. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again we are amazed when we look at the details of your sacrifice for us. We know, Lord, that you gave your son Jesus to go to that cross. But when we really think about it, we see how many things he was willing to sacrifice for us, and we are so grateful. Today, as we, as we remember, Father, that he was at your side, and then he was born in Bethlehem and lived among us as Emmanuel, God with us, we are, uh, we are humbled again, and we are inspired then to be uh, ones who follow the example that Jesus gave us and love others and give to others and care for others and be willing to listen to your will in our life as individuals and together as a congregation. So, Lord, we thank you for this reminder. And may it uh, enliven our hearts as we participate this morning in the baptism of Michael and Christopher. As we ask your blessing on them, we pray that each of us will grow in our faith as well. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're ready for our baptismal service, and at this time, we invite you to join us in the fellowship hall where the chairs are already set up. Take your place there for the, our baptismal service. We'll see you in the fellowship hall.